Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. Hello there, everybody. So grateful to be with you. Wanted to start off this show as a dedication to uh, our brother in the light. Uh, now, uh, Ryan Long. I'm just uh, so deeply touched by this man who created this City Summit event and is now deceased. Um, he. Uh, his car crashed and um, and uh, he uh, died recently. So I just wanted to, I want to dedicate this show to him. I only met him briefly. He put together this incredible event, this great mix of people who are doing just incredible philanthropy with people who are non-for-profits that are changing the, the, the world in, um, in deep, meaningful ways. Uh, and also with business owners, people uh, like ourselves and all different size and scales of companies and people coming together to hear from experts in the field of business. People are million dollar, billion dollar business. Robert Hershevek was at this one that I went to. Brian Tracy, I, just a number of people. Um, Jeff Hoffman comes to mind, which I have a clip of him too coming up uh, in the future, um, who was the uh, uh, founder of Priceline. And just, I mean, he just was connected with so many people and he created such philanthropy from what I understand of him. I don't know a lot about him, but personally, just the opportunity to be media at his event was amazing. And the, the love and the hearts that he had that was showed up at this event um, really touches me. So if you just um, take a moment of silence and touch into your hearts and give thanks uh, for Ryan Long, a brother who is now transitioned to the light. Thank you. Okay, so I, with that all being said, I wanted to get right into what we're doing for this show from there, because I know Ryan's all about that. Let's take action. Let's get on it now. So thank you, Ryan. So we're going to uh, we're going to be sharing incredible people today with you. Ramon Newman, he's first up and he's this is a guy who went into meditation, became a monk for 10 years. And now he's supporting as a coach, etc. Million and billion dollar companies. <laughs> and he's going to talk to you about the power of stillness. What do you know? So you definitely want to understand about that and how to operate at a much higher level. And that's what we're all about here at Spiritual Rockstar. So listen in to him, what he has to share. We also have uh, interview time with the amazing Jill Lublin, publicity master. She's going to help you understand how important it is to show up in the world and just encourage you with that and give you some tips on that. And then we have, um, last but not least, Merlise. She just she shares about the, the, the struggles we have in our humanity and how to love and embrace ourselves and come back to center and the importance of that. And I think you really enjoy her wisdom as well. So uh, the, the founder of Yin City, and she's in Las Vegas, right, where it's the idea is Sin City and she's Yin City. So... You definitely want to hear from Mary Lee. She's an amazing, beautiful being. Okay, so I'm grateful to share all these amazing uh, rock stars in the world with you, starting with Ramon. And here we are. We're here with Ramon Newman, and I'm just so grateful for the opportunity for us to connect. It's been a while, my friend. Yeah, God, it was, <laughs> it was great that you connected out of the blue. I love that. Yeah, it's been a fun. And so um, we're having fun here at the City Summit, day two. And I just wanted to spend a little time with you. I want to ask you, what does it mean to you to be a spiritual rock star? Uh, I believe it's having courage, real courage, not to just take action in spite of fear, 
but I believe that's 50% of the equation. I believe we also have to have courage to go back into and step back into our silence, into our stillness, mm -hmm. so that we are more awake and more alert and more agile and we're more aware of what is the best action to take, not just action for the sake of action or to be seen to be taking action. Yeah, wow, that's, uh, that's awesome. And that's exactly right, that inner awakening, which, you know, it's, it's funny that I think you're the first person I went right to that, I, almost right away, like, so it's about going in, you know? <laughs> that I love that, that. That comes from the monk days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you had what, was it 10 years? 10 or? years as a full-time meditating monk. Eight wow. hours a day when my whole job was to go back inside and be uh -huh. quiet. I was literally given money to be quiet. <laughs> that and isn't, I mean, that, it's funny, like there's people I, that I asked to go on a silent retreat with me and they're like, silent for days? Are you kidding me? I mean, like, that's crazy, that's scary. And I like, oh well, yeah. So that's pretty bold right there is, is doing, you know, deepening meditation. I know that's a big part of, um, you know, definitely a part of what you do yeah. in supporting people, right? So tell us more about, the big shifts and um, you bring to people and, and how you know who you're helping. So basically, we're helping leaders, CEOs, executive leaders of multi-million, multi-billion-dollar companies that have a lot of responsibility, and they've got to make things happen. You know, and a lot of the time that they're very gripped by action, they have to act and make things happen. But that can often lead to mistakes and errors and burnout and things like that. And so our job is to help them to come back to a more settled state from which to act and then create a better influence that way because every leader has a vision it doesn't necessarily mean that vision gets support from the environment so and that often comes from the leader they're not somehow clearly projecting that vision into their environment so people don't get it so for example one of our clients he was looking to make a reverse merger acquisition happen so take his three billion dollar company to a six billion dollar company and he knew he had to do it he had the vision this has got to happen because this is going to make our company much more stronger but when he went to his major shareholder to say, hey, I want to do this, he didn't get support. They said, no, we don't want to do this. It's going to ruin the stock price, the performance of the company, and the culture of the company. So he came back to us and said, well, what do I do? You know, I got this vision. I know we have to go this way, but I'm not getting support from my environment for it. So we said, well, you can intellectually debate someone and try and mm -hmm. you know, get them to intellectually understand what you want to do. Or you can actually just own that reality more fl fully and more clearly before you communicate it, and then they're more likely to get it. So we said we can, you can go and keep, we can help you kind of debate with them, or we can help you work on yourself and own this reality more fully, more clearly inside of yourself, and then go back to them. So we said, okay, let's work on me. So we did that for three, four weeks, really got them to go deep on this vision and, and clarify it. And after three, four weeks, said, okay, go and ask them. He did and gave the talk. Every one of those major shareholders who said no now said, okay, we get it now, let's do it. So first obstacle overcome. Second uh, thing was making the deal work. That was long hours, tight time frames, multiple no-go hurdles and many possibilities for stress. And he said, despite all that, he felt like he was the eye of the storm. He was very calm, very relaxed. The deal fell into place. Now, the reason why he was so calm and relaxed because he already owned the reality he wanted to create and trusted it fully and trusted himself fully to create it and then everything unfolded from there and that's what leaders can do they have such a powerful influence but they really have to own that reality more clearly inside themselves for it to happen more effortlessly so it's a whole remembrance of uh, in, in truth of we're creating it from the inside yep. and then it just shows it, sh it does literally just show up of course you're in action and all that but it's, it's created within exactly and then all of a sudden here it is exactly right? if you yeah. can't see it inside then it's hard to create it outside mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. what a lot of leaders want to do is they want to progress mm -hmm. right which is great mm -hmm. that's what leaders do mm -hmm. unfortunately sometimes there can be stresses and vices mm -hmm. below the surface that block that from happening mm -hmm. And so what we encourage leaders to do is not focus on the progress first, but focus mm -hmm. on what needs to be purified first, mm -hmm. either inside of them, in their environment, in their relationships, and then things will unfold. Yeah, exactly. So it's so important. It's a, a step I think is we just keep layering on, right, to try to build, oh, well, we'll just build this and we'll just build that yeah. without doing the deeper work. The foundation, that we need to do. yeah, Foundations. yeah, exactly. So um, the, the next question I want to ask you is what, additional like input or advice would you have for people that have like a big vision or something big they want to do in the world but they haven't really been able to bring that forth yet 
Uh, my advice would be to find a way to go more deeply within, first of all. And second of all, hire someone like Dan, like myself, who really understand this inner game very, very well and can really help you bring, bring that out to the surface. So I believe everybody should have a coach, no matter you know, what, how, what level they're on. And it's very important that you get that outside support to help you more deepen yourself and then own that reality. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ramon. We're so grateful to yeah, thank have you. had you Appreciate come the time. forth to share your, your awesomeness and uh, your wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I really love the theme of spiritual rock star. You know, I believe everybody has to own that for themselves. So it's a great thing. Right. Okay, many blessings to you. You too. Okay. All right. And, and here at the City Summit, and wanted us to spend just a brief time with you. Thank We're asking you. people here at this uh, summit, what does it mean to you to be a spiritual rock star? Ooh, first of all, I love the term spiritual <laughs> rock star. What it means to me is to go deep into my soul and how can I um, emphasize my talent, shine my light? I mean, what do rock stars do, right? They get out, they perform. They perform at their hundred thousand percent best. <clears throat> they are in front of lots of people. Um, and, and that requires a presence, a clarity, a connection, a discipline, and constant practice. And that's what life is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Constant practice, connection, deepening, connecting to the people who you serve. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, that's what being a spiritual rock star is. Oh, amazing. Now, I'd love to ask you, I know you, you're up to a lot of th uh, things you're helping people you know get their message out into the world through what you do through publicity etc but you're also with the kindness project and you know you got a lot of energy behind that and you've got a book I love for you to tell us more about any and all of that tell us more about how you're making a big impact in the world right now thank you <clears throat> well my latest book is called the prophet of kindness and I'm inspired to really spread the message of kindness mm -hmm. and to put, bring it to um, ordinary people, you know, because kindness is an extraordinary action. And instead of practicing random acts of kindness, I'd like for people to practice conscious acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. And so um, in August, we're doing the Kindness Conference in L.A. Please come. Please talk to people about it and uh, we're, we'll be putting out kindness circles. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I wanna be there. Good. What are, what's the kindness circles? Tell us just briefly about that. Um, what it is is circles, uh, mostly we're gonna put them virtually, mm -hmm. where people will come together on Zoom and frankly ask for a kindness of what they need. Like, you know, how many people need something but don't know how to ask? Mm -hmm. So I want to teach people how to ask, how to be kindly served, mm -hmm. and how to serve kindly. Oh, wow. And so this is huge. Got to be there. So <laughs> pay attention, upcoming details. Where can people learn about that, by the way? Thank you. If you go to jilllublin.com, mm -hmm. lots of L's in there, <laughs> J-I-L-L and L-U-B-L-I-N.com. We'll tell you all about it. Oh my God, you gotta be with her. She will absolutely set you up with the people you're meant to connect with at an event like that. Now, Jill, tell us uh, one last thing. What advice do you have for all our spiritual rock stars uh, in the making and the uh, people that want to rise higher um, at the next level? What advice do you have for them to really make that bigger difference they want to make in the world? I, excuse me, I think it's it okay. all starts it all starts with your message. Mm -hmm. It all starts with your message. Let's get clear on your message and with a specific plan to take it out there in the way that you can. It doesn't have to be the New York Times mm -hmm. or you know the biggest TV show at first. Let's start mm -hmm. local in your community. Let's get clarity on your message, mm -hmm. step by step out to the world because without taking your message out to the world, how can you make a difference? Right. So I want you to make a difference and take that step into the world. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Jill, for, for sharing today. It's always the most awesome thing ever <laughs> to be with you. And what a rock star you are showing up here. With, <laughs> you, got, you got a little something to go on, but it's that's it. We're here with Mar Mariliz yeah. Manzan. Right? Manzan, yes. All right. Hi. I was so grateful to be with you. Yes, we synchronistically connected yesterday. And like I said before, like we 
I just felt like such a, you know, this angel energy and just your, your spirit. And I, I just really grateful to have some time with you. So I'm asking everybody, what does it mean to you to be a spiritual rock star? Yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's so kind of you to share that. Oh, such a good question. A spiritual rock star, personally for me, is to know thyself, is to have a connection with your own intrinsic inner highest self and highest self can be a term that we can hear and just have an idea of but personally for me the highest self is your highest expression of potential that the universe lives within and to have a relationship with that energy whether you call it the lord jesus universe krishna buddha isis mother mary mother father god universe that connection that is infinite in the world. Even the great Om in my trainings of India, Om is the highest vibration. It is the all that is. And what that vibration itself, to have a connection with the infinite is to know yourself in regard to knowing that everything is for you. Everything that happens in your world is literally working in your favor. And so for me, being a spiritual rock star is like when I'm walking down the street or when I'm going through my business daily and it's like, when I find myself having hardship or difficulty, or even I love my mom and I love my family and my sisters, those are the ones that can trigger me the most. And when I watch the anger and the hurt that arises, I am literally doing the work by feeling not only first grateful, but processing what's happening through my own hurt from the other person and owning it, living it and seeing it's not the other person, it's me, I'm the one that is being affected by this experience and can I acknowledge it rather than resist it or give blame to it. I find that really living in your rock stardom as a spiritual gangster is to own and take responsibility and be aware of what's taking place and be a full authenticity of it. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm being a biatch right now. Yes, I feel jealous. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But can you be okay and honor it rather than resist it? Because resistance is what causes suffering. Mm -hmm. To be a spiritual rock star is to own whatever is your, your reality in that moment and to connect with your higher divine and to have a relationship and say, right now, I'm suffering. Right now, I want to slap this person. Right now, I want to... I'm just freaking angry and like yeah there's a sense of peace and divine order that comes through when you can communicate with the higher intelligence and feel like this is what is flowing through and it's natural and it can be released through me because I'm inwardly engaging with what's taking place rather than resisting uh, outstanding and from that place so uh, like you said we're, when we're as a spiritual entrepreneur, business owner, you're out there and we're getting triggered and our stuff is coming up, right? It's like, oh, it's all in alignment. It's all, you know, whoa, 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 I got to deal with this. I got that to deal with, right? So how do you, okay. how do you navigate that? And um, tell us how you navigate that first, just briefly, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, it's true. I teach meditation and I watch myself go in different places and have a, a, a negative feedback loop, feeling guilty and then needing to forgive myself for the things I thought I should have done or could have done better. What brings me back is honestly meditation. I go before my altar, I sit and I, I breathe and I instantly feel connected to something much more than the experience that I wrapped myself in with story, you know, especially with building a business and finances and um, feeling like I could be doing more, feeling inadequate. Right when I sit and breathe and I just invite the divine to cleanse me, I envision a light that comes down through my head, through my body that washes me away from any energies that are not serving my vision. I feel enraptured with my divine's grace and I, I relate to my divine as the Lord, as as um, Yeshua, I relate to my divine in many forms and right away I can feel sometimes the embrace of the divine mother and I feel so much lighter knowing that I have an internal friend that is there with me regardless and I feel this immense connection and I know that even what I'm experiencing, the, the experience of itself brings me back to that connection to remember and so that's what Honestly, like coming back to my Lord, my divine, my best friend, gives me strength. It's, it's remembering to take a breath that mm -hmm. the divine is always working through me and can I make time for that?
It brings you back to center, right? Yeah. And in that awakened awareness that allows you to navigate whatever is showing up. It's so yeah, true. Yeah. We forget it because yeah, we want to be showing up so much for other people and in the world. We forget, like, can we make this a priority? Make my connection with my highest self the, the whole priority? Let's take a moment now as we wrap up, like tell us about the work you do because you actually address this sort of thing through your work. I know it. So tell us about that. Yes. So I have my own business called Yin City. I am based in Las Vegas, but let's know this. Yin City is global. It's it's the Yin City. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Thank you. And it's uh, in Las Vegas in particular, you know, we're known for the darkness. But there's beauty in the dark. Yin is the feminine natural energy of the yin and yang. It's bringing the lightness in the dark and owning and taking responsible and having a full acceptance of the shadow, right? And it's the light and the dark, the interplay that give birth to to so many forms of growth and magnificence and miracles. And so my business is I help people to heal and awaken through processes, meditation, yoga, I deal and I help with clients, personal group, couples, and I go into mindfulness. I actually teach mindfulness and meditation through businesses. So really I love going into business offices, leading workshops. I lead yoga at, uh, weekly throughout several businesses and then leading high peak performance um, celebrity clientele. I really enjoy doing that as well. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you for the impact you're yes. making in the world. Doing thank you for you getting this out do. there. <laughs> Sure, absolutely, and um, um, I feel we'll be further connecting going yeah, in the future, and yeah. so grateful for your time today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So, for much. Us. so <laughs> much gratitude for you and for finding me and for sharing. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, much love. <laughs> Yay, much love. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so it's a wrap. You're listening to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.